One of the most common things I hear from composers is, well, I found this idea, I really like it, but I just don't know what to do with it next. I don't know how I should carry it on. It can feel quite stressful to feel that you've got that blank page and no inspiration. So sometimes one of the best approaches is, rather than continuing that hunt in the dark for another new idea, stick with what you've already got and instead find ways to vary it. Now, a musical idea might be anything from a short phrase to a bass line or a chord progression, or it might be a fully formed melody. And the ways we can vary it range from the very simple to, as we'll see, something much more extreme. So I'll use an idea most of us already know, the tune Amazing Grace, and we'll make a bunch of variations. Our first variation technique is melodic variation. The simplest way to do this is to embellish the melody, which simply means add a few extra twiddles. There are lots of different kinds of embellishment, but this usually involves playing the note itself and one or more of the neighbouring notes in quick succession. So if the original tune was a series of dots on a line like this, you could think of adding a wiggle to our line. There's one called a mordant, which just goes up and down. And there's a turn, which kind of turns around the main note to make a kind of wiggle. And then there's the trill, which is usually the note and the one above played several times in fast succession. So a really embellished version of our tune might look like this. Next up, we can vary the rhythm. Our tune's currently in 3-4, but we might change the time signature and turn it into a 2-4 march. Or we might split the chunks between the two registers and add a little light syncopation. Now your initial idea might be more than just a melody, it might have some harmony. Here's a typical traditional harmony that might go under our theme. So harmonic variation simply means changing these chords to something else. The tune stays the same, but the landscape it sits in has changed, and this can alter the feeling of things quite a bit. common trick with harmonic variation is to change the mode, so we could change our melody for example from major to minor, which will of course change the feeling completely. Now so far we're talking about just doing one variation, so we've perhaps doubled the length of our original idea. And sometimes this will be all you need. Here's a melody from Chopin's Nocturne in F minor, and he follows it straight away by a variation. It's just a way of extending the melody a little. And here's an example from one of my own pieces. This is a little idea from my clarinet quintet, Gumboots. And a little later in the piece, here's an embellished version of it, a variation on that idea. Variation as a technique is just something most of us composers use in one way or another. But variation can be more than a technique, it can be used to create whole structures. And in classical music that's usually called variation form. The idea of variation form is as obvious as it sounds, just loop round and round your idea, creating a piece made up of a bunch of different variations on that idea. But isn't that going to make things a bit, well, predictable? Well it certainly can do, but if you think about it, most jazz basically does exactly this. Here's Corey Henry improvising on our Amazing Grace theme. And the more you listen to it, the more you realise it's just variation form by another name.
Far from being predictable and boring, the fact the improvisation cycles around the theme provides structure to the improvisation, giving us a kind of reference point to return to when things get extreme. And much of the pleasure in listening to a solo like this is in simultaneously listening out for where we are in the structure, whilst marvelling at how far the soloist is taking us away from it. In fact, jazz gives us a clue to one of the main ways variation form works in classical music. We've seen how we can keep the melody the same and vary the harmony, but we can also keep the harmony the same and change everything else above it. Sometimes the harmony might be a series of chords, sometimes it might just be a bass line. Some of the earliest examples were what's known as the ground bass, or the basso ostinato, which means the obstinate bass. And you can certainly hear that happy obstinacy in this example of the dance known as the Bergamasca by Marco Uccellini, which uses the basic 1-4-5-1 bass pattern and just keeps going round and round. kind of ground bass pieces that often also imply a harmony above were also sometimes known as chacons or passacalias. One of the best known examples of a ground bass piece is Packlebell's Canon. It's strange to think of it this way, but the theme or the main idea for this piece is just these eight notes which form the bass line for the entire piece. So if the musical idea you've thought of has a bass line and a harmony, this is another way you can make it go a lot further. Remove the melody and just treat the chords that remain as a starting point for something new. So here the melody bears no resemblance to Amazing Grace, but the chords are just the same. Only now I've just stretched them out into a 4-4 bar to give the melody some more space. One of the problems with this kind of obstinate bass or repeated chord patterns as a form is how to keep the levels of interest up. Even a popular piece like Packlebell's Canon is known for its ability to, well, get on your nerves after a while. This is something that composers have always struggled with when doing a series of variations. There's not the inherent drama of a form like sonata form where opposing ideas battle it out. Instead, here you just have one idea going round and round. One of the most common ways to try and overcome this is to increase the complexity of things as the piece progresses. This is already something composers in the Renaissance and the Baroque periods did in pieces known as differentias or divisions, where the harmonic rate of the chord stays the same, but the number of notes per chord increased. This is Handel's famous piece known as the Harmonious Blacksmith from the 1720s, and at the end of each phrase I've just jump cut to the next variation, so you can see how the speed of the notes just gets faster and faster as we go on. So in this variation I've again kept the harmonic outline of Amazing Grace, but now I've filled in the space between the chords with runs of 30 second notes. So maybe this all sounds a bit crude to you, I mean just speeding up the notes sounds a bit simplistic, right? Well it's time to check in on a couple of masters. Bach's Goldberg Variations is perhaps the ultimate piece to look at this method of composing over a fixed chord progression. Bach starts the work with a simple melody and then extracts just the harmony and uses it to generate no less than 30 variations, and all stick pretty closely to the chords of the melody. It's an amazing example of inventiveness which is sure to give you some ideas. And similarly, Beethoven's Diabelli Variations tends to keep at least the bare bones harmonic outline of its pretty ordinary opening waltz theme. But then it subjects that theme to all kinds of abuse. As pianist Alfred Brendel said, it's improved, parodied, ridiculed, disclaimed, transfigured, mourned, stamped out, and then finally uplifted. It's a real showcase of how far you can push an idea. 
So if you ever feel like you don't know what to do with your idea, choose any one of the variations of either of these masterpieces and have a good look at it and I'm sure you'll find something to inspire you. In my case I think the inspiration may have come a little too close to outright theft. But don't forget I'm still using the Amazing Grace chords here, which made the composing so much easier than if I'd been staring at a blank page. things Beethoven did which we haven't looked at yet is more advanced ways of varying a melodic idea and the trick here is not to think of your melody as an unbreakable whole but as something you can tear apart and use the pieces of to make something new. Beethoven even builds a whole fugue variation out of just this little moment a falling forth and a whole bunch of repeated notes so even the most unpromising material can be used to good end. <laughs> Here's another famous theme by Paganini, from which the composer made his own set of variations, but it also went on to be very popular with a whole bunch of other composers as the basis for their own variations. So let's say you're a composer who's decided to do some variations on this theme. Let's say your name is Rachmaninoff. Let's choose just a little fragment of this theme and see what we can do with it. So this bit seems quite catchy. Let's play with a load of those really fast and see what happens. Okay, not bad. So what if we say flip it on its head now? So we'll start from here. Let's see, this one goes up a minor third, so we'll go down a third. This one goes down a minor second, so we'll go up a minor second, major second, perfect fifth. Yeah. Notice that once we've taken that initial idea, the rest of the variation that Rachmaninoff does is pretty free. It only has the loosest connection to our original idea. But that's not really the point. The point is we've moved on, we've made some progress, we're composing. So I've taken a similar little fragment from Amazing Grace and that became the basis for this whole little dance. to have four hands if you want to do YouTube videos. Paganini's piece and Rachmaninoff's variations on it point up another way to compose with our idea that we haven't looked at yet and that's to work with tone colour or timbre. Here's Paganini's own variation where instead of playing the violin with the bow he's using a special type of pizzicato, the left hand pits, which produces a really unusual popping kind of effect. Of course how much you can play with timbre depends on the instrument you're composing for but there's plenty you can do even, say, at the piano. Rachmaninoff's piece starts by adding just a touch of extra spice to the tune, these little dissonant grace notes, which emphasise those staccato notes. So if we think of that little fragment that we pulled from Paganini's theme as a dot followed by a slide up and down. We'll try to imagine a more extreme version of that, a sharper point, a slidier slide. And we're composing again. Before we get to the most extreme kinds of variations, there are also numerous other ways you might think of playing around with your theme, which we don't have enough time to fully go into here. Another form you could draw inspiration from as a kind of variation is the Indian Raga. Now the idea of a raga, and this is vastly oversimplifying, is that it's not just a mode or a scale, but it's a series of ways of moving around a scale, a series of ideas you might say. And a raga improvisation is, well, a kind of variation on those ideas. And we might attempt something a little similar by, say, breaking up our tune into a series of fragments, and then thinking of these as some of our main tools to play with.
heterophony is the idea of playing several versions of a theme simultaneously, possibly at different speeds, as happens in Balinese gamelan music. So this might be another way you could find to vary your idea. Our penultimate variation should, I think, finally convince you that it's possible to travel pretty much anywhere you want to with your one little idea. This is the fourth string quartet by the American experimental composer Ben Johnston, who is famous for writing some of the most difficult music in the string quartet repertoire, full of extremely complex tuning systems and rhythmic devices. But this whole quartet, surprising as it may sound, is a set of variations on Amazing Grace. It opens with a simple version of the melody accompanied by a series of fifths tuned in pure intonation. And by the end of the piece, the tune is still there, but it's almost like it's been overgrown by these tendrils coming at it from all sides. You get the feeling Johnston has thought about every aspect, every harmonic and melodic implication of this little melody, and then pushed each of them to their furthest extreme. This is variation form to the max. But I don't want to end on the most extreme because this isn't a competition. As fun as Ben Johnston's piece is, there's no prizes for writing the most extreme thing. The key thing is, you found your idea, it might be the tiniest scrap of an idea, and by using some of these techniques of variation, you might, I hope, find a way to turn that idea into the reality of a fully formed piece of music. And all that's left for me to do is wish you well on your journey. Aww. Thank you so much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed this video. If you're new here, do check out my channel where there's plenty of other videos about composing and music in general. If you'd like to support the channel, do consider joining my patrons over at Patreon, as it's their support that makes the channel possible. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.